that's just some of the reaction to this week's Supreme Court ruling in the controversial case involving the retail chain Hobby Lobby and its bid seeking an exemption from the contraception mandate of Obamacare on religious grounds. The owners of the company had no problem offering insurance that covers most forms of birth control to their employees, but were not willing to cover emergency contraceptives and devices like the IUD that end human life after contraception. The High Court ruled in favor of the company, while conservatives say the Hobby Lobby decision is a landmark victory for religious liberty. It's igniting passions from some liberal groups charging that the GOP and now big business is waging a war on women. Our next guest says all this rhetoric is being used to fuel a so-called war on women and says that it's time for that spin to stop. Joining us now, the former CEO of the Fortune 500 company, Hewlett Packard, and a former candidate for the U.S. Senate seat in California, Carly Fiorona, joins us now. Great to have you here, as always. It's so great to be with you. Good to see you. Thank you. I know that you are heated up about all this because you really believe that this is something that does nothing more than to divide and further polarize people across the country. Back in 2012, that election cycle, uh, the war on women, the attack on women was fueled uh, by the Democratic yep. Party. And it was a rallying cry. And the GOP didn't do as much pushback as some might have hoped, including you. What's your reaction to what you're seeing right now? Well. First, it's obvious that the Democrats, realizing that the war on women, women worked one time, they're going to try it again. Uh, secondly, it is shameless, baseless propaganda. It has me fired up because it's so false. It's insulting to women. It assumes that all we care about is reproductive rights. It's insulting to women because it assumes we don't care to know the facts. It's insulting to women because it assumes that we have some orthodoxy that we all agree with. We're 53 percent of the voting public. We're half of this great nation. We care about every issue. In fact, every issue that voters care about is a woman's issue, whether it's the economy or jobs or security overseas and yes, reproductive rights. But what really fires me up is the false narrative. I mean, my goodness, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the long arm of the law reaching inside the body of a woman. Yikes, it sounds terrifying. However, it's just plain false. You know, it's always frustrating to me, and along with other women, as you point out, about the fact that these issues are divide, divided along lines of reproductive rights, abortion, and it should bother any woman, Democrat, Independent, Republican, about this debate going on right now, because it seems like if you have any issue that uh, goes against what the pervasive, pervasive narrative happens to be, that you are against a woman's reproductive rights, against women's issues, et cetera. It exactly. just goes on and on. Exactly. It is insulting to all women, regardless of whether you're pro-life or pro-choice. I happen to be pro-life. But wherever you stand on that, regardless of your political affiliation, it's insulting to all women. And of course, your viewers know well the facts of Hobby Lobby, but long before Obamacare, the female employees of Hobby Lobby had access to contraception right. through the company provided health insurance. Long after this decision, they will still have so access good. to contraception. And in a little known, little reported fact, you know, this mandate to cover 20 forms of contraception doesn't even come from Obamacare. It comes from regulations that followed Obamacare that were written in the basement of HHS by a bunch of regulators. We don't know who they are. They weren't elected. They're not accountable. And yet, this is about a war on women. It's enough. And we can't just let this war on women play out so now. So you're so fired up. You've do, you're doing something about yes, it. Yes, I'm doing something about so you've it. You've got a pack that you've created, but it goes beyond just fundraising. Yes, what we're really doing is motivating and galvanizing, training and tasking women on the ground. We're starting our ground game in six key battleground purple states, Virginia, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Michigan, Colorado, Iowa, states where Senate races clearly matter. We're asking women who are in their communities, in their places of work, in their places of worship, to reach out and talk to other women, Republican-leaning and independent women, because we know that women are most influenced by women they know. This all started when I gave a speech several months ago at CPAC, the large gathering of conservatives here in D.C., and I talked about the war on women. And the response was so overwhelming from women all over the country, of all ages, who said, please, please, help us deliver this message. And so we're going to, on the ground, as I say, with training and clear goals, we're going to activate women to 
uh, combat this ridiculous, insulting propaganda, which sadly has worked, and we can't let it work again. And you're going to push the Republican Party to, this time, react to it. Well, look, there are many efforts going on, and all of them are important. But from my vantage point and the vantage point of many, many women, something was still missing. What was missing was a real ground game. What was missing was women really engaged in that ground game. And what was missing as well was some very clear, focused messages on enough already. We're women. We've had it. There is no war on women. Can we please talk about all the issues we care about? Well, all the best to you. Thank you, Emma. Great to have you here in our studio. It's great to Thanks be with you. Thanks for being here.